Hey everybody, it's Mr. Longo, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to solve a system of equations using your graphing calculator and matrices. And what we're going to do is work with something known as reduced row echelon form of a matrix. Okay, um, what does that mean? Well, it just means we're going to use our calculator because we're not going to get into it because I'm never going to make you do that by hand. Okay, so check it out. Um, what we need to do is create a matrix and what we are going to do is separate that into an x, y, and a constant column. And so that means this is going to have three columns, and you can see that it's going to have two rows. So the name of our matrix is going to be a 2 by 3, or shall I say the size of our matrix is going to be a 2 by 3. Um, it's important to make sure that you have the correct dimensions of the matrix when you type it in the calculator. Uh, so it knows what we're actually working with. And then, to create this matrix, all we have to do is pretty much put our x's, y's, and constants in the correct column. So we have a 2, 3, 13. And then we have a 4, negative 1, 5. Now, if there was a variable that was skipped, such as there was no y in the top, uh, you would have to fill it with a 0. Um, we wouldn't need a system to solve that if it was the case, but, you know, when we get to bigger problems, you might need to do something like that. Okay, so now the next part is all done in your graphing calculator. So what you need to do is learn where the matrix uh, menu is, and that would be pressing second and then this X to the negative one button, which will pull up a matrix. So there's three different options. There's names, and that's when you just want to use it. Math, which is where you're going to find some different things we can do with matrices. And then finally, edit. When you want to enter information, you want to go to edit first. So like I said, this calculator needs to know the size of the matrix, and it has two rows, three columns like we already said, and that'll make the correct size for you. Now you just type in the information. So we have a 2, click enter, 3, click enter, 13, click enter, and it'll just jump for you. And then we have a 4, negative 1, and 5. Okay, and then once you have that all entered, you want to click second and quit the mode button. Now it's going to take you to a screen where we want to use some of those math features for the matrix. So you have to click second matrix again, slide over to math, and you are going to go down to what you see is RREF. Don't do R-E-F, it's R-R-E-F, reduce row echelon form. And you click enter, and now it's going to say which matrix would you like me to take the R-R-E-F of. So you go back to second matrix, and you click number one for matrix A where you entered that information. Close your parentheses, click enter, and this is known as your identity matrix in the beginning. Um, so this part where it had a 1, 0, 0, 1, um, that's your identity matrix. And then if you look over here, the end is 2, 3. Well, that is your solution to X and Y. So this guy over here is 2. This is 3. So we know the solution to this system is 2, comma, 3. Remember, we should always write our solutions to systems in coordinate form. Um, but that's it. Your calculator just did all of the work for you. Okay, so you're going to have an opportunity to try that with some bigger problems. There are two special cases, though. Now, this is what you would probably remember when you did these by hand. Um, you would get like a false statement or a true statement, and that would mean that you had infinite solutions, or it would mean that you had no solution. Um, when we work with matrices, we can actually go a little farther, okay? So one of the special cases is basically when you get to the end, when you have that identity matrix like I showed you in the previous problem, the 1, 0, 0, 1, basically 1s are going diagonal and everything else is zeros. That means you actually have a solution. This means your x is equal to 2 and your y is equal to 3. But if you get something really weird like this, you're really paying attention to the bottom row. This is saying that 0 equals 1, which is clearly a false statement. So whenever that happens, all you have to write is inconsistent. Um, it means there's no solution, so you're done. 
Um, but the next example is a little different. Um, this one has an entire bottom row of zeros. That means that this is a dependent matrix, which means infinite solutions. But how do we know, like, what are all of our infinite solutions? And that's where we can take it a step further with matrices. So you see how this is in the bottom? That means we have a y-dependent one. Um, and all we have to do is use this guy up here at the top. And this is our x column, this is our y, and this is our constants. So we actually have a 1x minus 1 third y is equal to 7 thirds. And now you just have to solve for x, so add 1 third y to both sides, and we get x is equal to 1 third y plus 7 thirds. And that's going to give us a solution, which means this is a dependent system, and all of our answers are going to be x is 1 third y plus 7 thirds, comma, and then we just have our y. And that's how you would write your final answer. Okay? Um, so that's that. And no more need to use uh, substitution or elimination if you are allowed to use a graphing calculator. The cool part is it also works with three variable systems. So back when you learned how to solve with x, y, and z, and you had to do a whole bunch of work to get all of these different matrices, you can now do it in a graphing calculator. The only difference is, is when you use your graphing calculator for these, you have to make sure you use a 3 by 4 on your graphing calculator, and then just see if you can plug it in and do the stuff. Um, over here, as I mentioned earlier, notice how this doesn't have a Z, this doesn't have an X, so be careful when you're typing the matrix in. So I am actually going to let you try these next two. I already showed you what buttons to push in your graphing calculator. Um, so go enter a 3 by 4 matrix for both of these and see if you can handle it. S write down what you get for the matrix, and if it is dependent, make sure you come up with the equations for each variable, and we'll see what you get. Pause the video and give it a shot on your own. Let's so for this guy, you should have had a 2, 1, 0, and then a 0, negative 2, 4, and then, of course, a 3, 0, negative 2, with your negative 4, 0, negative 11. And then when you get your RREF, you would have had the identity matrix that we needed and a negative 3, 2, negative 1. So that means the solution to this system would have been a negative 3, 2, negative 1. I'm sorry, should be a positive 1. And that's it for this guy. In the second example, you should have noticed something funny. Um, your final answer would have come up with this RREF of 0, or 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, and then our bottom row is all zeros. So that means we have a dependent um, matrix here. And since the bottom is our Z value, we are going to have Z dependent, which means when we get done writing this, we're going to have Z over here. But now what we have to do is solve for both of these guys. So we have on the top... This is our x, this is our z, so we have x minus z is equal to 2, add z to both sides, and x is equal to z plus 2. Okay, so x is z plus 2. In the second row, we have our y plus z equals a negative 1. So y plus z equals a negative 1. Subtract our z, so y is equal to a negative z minus 1. We put it right here in the middle, and we're done. So that's it. That's how you use your graphing calculator to solve matrices of, well, really pretty much any size for any system. All right, that's it for this. This is Long One. I'm out. See you. Bye.